gang, Julia Usher recipes for a sweet life. We're fast approaching my favorite cookie holiday of the year, which is Valentine's Day. So in this video, I thought I'd share the ins and outs of my latest Valentine's themed stencil sets with you. They're called Roses Are Red, and they're again, part of my Dynamic Duo series, which means that they come as a pair. There's a beautiful background set that has lots of decorative elements and a corresponding message and frame set that ties into that background set. This particular set is inspired by my love of all things vintage and sweet, so I designed it so it might look like the top of a vintage candy box. So the background set contains a ribbon that would be tied around the box, as well as little heart and floral elements that you might decorate the top of the box with. The corresponding message and frame set then has messages and frames naturally, but they look like little gift tags that you might tie around the ribbon on the box. And you'll see all of that in photos that are bouncing overhead and also as we get into the video. One note before we get into what you need for the project, don't worry if you're watching this video after Valentine's Day, because this particular set of stencils is perfectly suited for weddings, Mother's Day, birthdays, any event where you need to shower a little bit of love on someone you care about. So let's talk about what you'll need for this project. Ideally, you want a few, one or two at least, iced cookies. The icing should be fully dry all the way through because we'll be applying a little bit of pressure as we stencil the cookies. You'll need my Dynamic Duo sets, my Roses are Red set in particular which is comprised again of a series of background and foreground elements. That's what I call the background set. And I'll get into all the elements in here as we move forward. You'll need the corresponding message and frame set. This one I believe has four messages and frames, but again, we'll get into those details as we move forward. For stenciling, you might also need my quadrant masking tool to isolate parts of the stencils. This piece here, I have this little teal, foam piece here for putting cookies on so they don't skid around and also to help you guys see my stencils as we get into looking at them. In the actual stenciling process, I use the Stencil Genie or Stencil Frame to hold the stencils intact and to ensure that they lay perfectly flat on top of the cookies, but sometimes I need to press them down additionally to make sure they're perfectly flush. And I might use my trussing needle for that or magnets. I don't need anything magnetized. These are just nice little heavy small pieces that help to hold the stencils down. Alternatively, you can use tape to secure some of the masking elements in place, and you'll see how I use those as we go through the video. These cookies I further embellish with lots of things. I don't necessarily just apply the stencils directly to the cookie. I also apply the stencils in the form of fondant appliques and little wafer paper elements that sit raised on top of the cookie and give it a little more interest and relief. And for that, for the fondant appliques, we'll naturally need a little bit of fondant. We'll also need a pasta machine for rolling it out, which I don't have on the deck here because it's kind of clunky, but we'll be bringing that out later. For the wafer paper elements, you're gonna need some clear wafer paper, which is just an edible paper. And ultimately, those two things will be transformed into the kind of decorative elements that I spoke of that would go on top, these being fondant appliques, little dried fondant pieces that will be set above the cookie, and they can be various designs. I've got many different stencils in the set. So this is the rose version of the fondant applique. I've also got some heart stencils that allow me to do little heart appliques. So we'll have our pick of those two. And I'm gonna do the messages on wafer paper so they look truly tag-like and paper-like. And here's just an example of what they'll look like finished, but I'll show you all of that. And additionally, I may also embellish with some royal icing roses. I have a whole nother video about how I make royal icing roses, so check that out. We won't be going into detail on that technique here. Of course, with these stencils, because it's a layered stencil set, I am working with an airbrush. You can use royal icing with these stencils, but royal icing would have to go down as the last layer. In this case, I'm gonna be airbrushing every layer, and I'm using six colors. They're preloaded in these guns and labeled by color just so I can keep them straight. You'll of course need a compressor as well to run those airbrushes and mine is sitting on the floor. At the end, I'll detail the cookies a little bit, add some leaves around the roses and maybe some icing beadwork. So royal icing of various consistencies is also needed. So let's move on to the first step, which is just working with the background set, all the pretty decorative elements. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so let's talk about what's in the background set of my Dynamic Duos pair. It's a six piece set, starting first with a background stencil. As a reminder, this is designed to look like a vintage candy box. So my background stencil consists of a simple pattern. And on top of it, you see a crisscross, which is designed to replicate a weathered or worn ribbon that might be tying up the box. Now, normally I'd lay some decorative elements on top of this background piece, but to leave room for them, I need to use masking elements to block off those areas. This particular set has three masking elements, two heart shapes, and something here that looks a little abstract, but it actually is to leave room for roses that are tied up with ribbon as well. Once you lay down the mask and leave room for those other decorative elements, you come in with the fifth piece, which is the foreground stencil. And this allows you to put in the detail within those areas that you masked off. So again, here's the rose pattern and the two heart patterns. Probably work with the striped heart pattern today. And then the last piece in this set is what is called the shading stencil. This is designed to put shadows around some of those decorative elements. In this particular case, I think it looks best without the shadow, so I probably won't use the shading stencil here, but you'll see me using the equivalent of it when we get to the message and frame set. Now, before I actually stencil, I just wanna show you some of the designs possible with just the background set. Here you have an example of the striped heart superimposed on the background stencil, and all the elements have been stenciled directly on the cookie, with the exception of the little roses, and you'll see that that's obvious because the pattern is very, very flat. Conversely, I've done similar kind of effect, but here I created a fondant applique, which we'll be doing in the next section out of the striped heart. So this is not superimposed directly on the cookie. I just laid the background pattern and put this on later. So I'll be doing this cookie in its entirety and also starting a cookie that looks like this that will finish off as we move through the video. You could of course just lay the floral element alone on the background, which looks quite pretty and I'll have some pictures of that scrolling overhead. You could lay the rose element on top of the ribbons directly and that looks beautiful too. So lots of possibilities and that's the key thing to remember with these sets is to get creative with mixing and matching the various pieces. Okay, the first step is to secure the background stencil on this stencil genie or frame to make sure that stencil lays perfectly flush against the cookie. Any areas where the stencil is not flush are areas where there's an opportunity for airbrush coloring to go underneath. I'm now weighting down that mask and airbrushing the exposed areas, starting with brown in the dots and then moving on to a different color in the ribbon. Remember when airbrushing to spray at a 90 degree angle to the cookie, this will also minimize under spray. Use a trussing needle as I am here to further press down any areas of the stencil that are lifting. That too will prevent under spray. And also use relatively low pullback or minimal pullback on the trigger so you don't get a pooling of coloring on top. I'm operating pretty close range to the stencil so we don't want an over accumulation of color on top. Moving on to the maroon. For the ribbons, this will create kind of a vintage country vibe with the brown, red, and blue that we'll be applying later. And we're done. Let's see what that looks like. Big reveal. Ta-da! Looks pretty darn good. I had a low area in the middle of this cookie, so I do have some underspray around the ribbons in the center, but nothing too bad. So now it's time to set the striped heart that corresponds to the mask I had on it earlier. Of course, we wanna mask off any areas of the cookie that are exposed. You'll notice I'm not using the stencil frame here because with the stencil off to the side, it will no longer fit in the frame. The frame will hit the cookie. So I'm gonna to have to lay it on the cookie by itself. I'm just gonna tape down that mask first so it doesn't fly off when I airbrush and use my trussing needle and a combination of magnets to hold it firmly in place against the cookie. Typically when Stenciling in close areas with lots of colors. I like to start with a light color first. So here I'm starting with pink and then migrate to the darker colors because it's always gonna be easier to cover a light mistake with a dark color than vice versa. Moving on to light green, then the blue for the bow. And then I'll start picking up my darker shades, namely a darker green to give some low lights to the leaves and then maroon and brown to finish off the heart. But let me finish the blue here. I'm going all the way around the edge of the heart with it and also hitting the bow. Now in with the dark green to give some interest to those leaves, a little maroon to give some interest to the roses, and then brown will form the basis of the stripes. 
Again, working really close range to get in between the bow with the brown without getting into the blue. I think that looks pretty good, but let's see when we do the big reveal. Ta-da, really nice, except for a little bit of underspray in the center, it looks pretty good. And I, I could have gotten that blue a little bit darker, but it looks generally quite good. Here's the underspray I'm talking about here, a little bit around the ribbon area. But of course it's more noticeable also because the color is darker, but had I held down with a trussing needle there a little bit better or had a flatter cookie, I could have avoided that. Now I'd like to shade the edge. Sometimes a little bit of shading eliminates the need for a border. Here I'm using brown and spraying at a greater distance, maybe a few inches from the cookie with, again, low pullback on the trigger, just to create kind of an antiquing effect around the edge. And we'll ultimately decorate it something like this. So the next thing I wanna do is create a cookie that looks something like this, or possibly like this yellow one, but they're similar in the sense that they just have the background stencil applied without any masks. All the other elements are airbrushed separately on fondant and laid down later. So I just need to apply the background stencil here very, very simply. I'm gonna try this white cookie. It's too big for the genie, but more importantly, it's got a really low spot in the center that's gonna make it tough to stencil. So I'm gonna to move to this yellow cookie. Again, too big for the genie, but it's a lot flatter. I am weighting it down heavily with magnets and my trussing needle in the absence of the genie. Right now I'm working with a Spectrum Flow Sky Blue, which is an alcohol-based coloring. For the brown, I'll be working with water-based Americolor coloring. And there's quite a difference between alcohol and water-based colorings, but I'll address that in another video in a few weeks. It's a very, very interesting topic and very, very different effects you can get with each. Just continuing to airbrush as I always do at close range to avoid overspray in other areas and holding down that stencil to ensure that it remains flush against the cookie at all times to avoid underspray. And we'll take a look at what it looks like. It looks beautiful. I too want to shade the edges of this like I did before. So again, I'm working at a little bit further distance so I just get a soft suggestion of color, not a real saturated look at the edge. But this gives a nice vintage antique effect. Okay, so in the last section, we covered my background set in detail. You saw how I directly applied a mask to the cookie and then stenciled a heart element on top of the background stencil. So all the elements were on the cookie itself. I also showed you just how to lay down the background because in this section, I'm gonna show you how to create some dimensional elements that we can stack on top. So if you're just gonna be using dimensional elements on top, there's no need to lay those masks down. So again, this is where we landed with just the background stencil at the end of the last section. And we're headed towards something that's gonna look like this. The colors here are a little bit different, but you'll note that the heart on top is not directly stenciled on the cookie, but is instead sitting on top of it. It's been stenciled onto fondant, which has been allowed to dry, and then I've stuck it down. Now, the advantage of doing that is that you have a little more design flexibility, not every design element is committed to the cookie immediately with an airbrush and a stencil. So that if you don't like what you've done with the fun and appliques, you can kind of mix and match more readily. So for instance, I've made a bunch of these guys in advance. Here's one that makes use of the striped heart on the stencil. And let's see how that looks. It's probably too much blue for my taste on the cookie, so I probably won't use that. So here's an example of me not liking something and picking up another choice. Here's an example of the fondant applique done with a damask heart stencil. And that looks better. I like the heaviness of the brown on that, but I don't like how that particular piece is stenciled, so I'm not sure I'll use that either. The other choice we have, because remember, there are three elements on that foreground stencil. We've also got a rose with a bow. And that element could look really pretty running across the cookie, like so. And I do like that, except I happen to break off the bottom loop of the bow, so I'm not gonna probably use that one either. I'll end up determining what I'm gonna use on top a little bit later, but as you can see, I've got a lot of flexibility here because these pieces are isolated. Let me show you now how to make them, and that begins with rolling out some fondant. So the first step is to roll the fondant through a pasta machine. I start at the number one setting, which is the largest distance between the rollers and then advance the rollers closer and closer together until I get it about 1 16th of an inch. This is it on the number three setting, so I wanna do it a little bit more finely, taking it down to the number four setting. And that looks great. This will just create 
a nice delicate applique on top, which will be palatable and crunchy and not hard to sink your teeth through. Now I'm just gonna airbrush over it as I would airbrush directly on royal icing on a cookie. I just wanna lay it flat on the cardboard, place the stencil on top. Here I obviously can't use the stencil frame because it'll hit the work surface. So I'm weighting it down with magnets and then airbrushing again at close range because I'm getting into some tight spots with low pullback on the trigger and at a 90 degree angle to the fondant. Starting light to dark, just as I did on the other cookie. Here I'm doing a brown edge around the heart and also on the inside before I had a blue edge. So this will look slightly different, but also equally nice. Now, while the fondant's still flexible, you wanna trim it out. If you wait too long, it'll dry. I'm working with satin ice, which is very fast drying. So within a half an hour on a dry day, it could dry to the point where you would crack it if you tried to cut it. I'm gonna start with some gross or big trims, I should say, with my paring knife and then get a little more precise into all the little angles of this applique. As I get into finer and finer areas, I'll work with the tip of the paring knife only, sometimes patting the edge of the knife against the piece, the side of the fondant to flatten it out if there are some angular cuts that I don't like. Patting with a knife helps to round them out. And if the areas are particularly small, I can also pick out bits of fondant with the tip of my turkey laser or trussing needle. Once it's dried overnight or even an hour, it'll be much more rigid and then something we can apply to the cookie without it flopping off the sides of the cookie. Okay, so we've talked about the background set a lot. We've used it to directly stencil a lot of elements on a single heart cookie. We've used it to make fondant appliques. So I think we've exhausted that topic. So I'm gonna move on to the message and frame set and talk to you about how it might be used. In this case, I've used the message and frame set to isolate it on a piece of wafer paper. These are designed to look like little tags on top of the heart boxes, if you will. So I wanted to put them on wafer paper and really make them stand out as opposed to directly on the cookie. However, you could of course do that too. And I'll talk about that in a bit. Here's an example of another one of the messages, again, done on wafer paper, so it looks rather tag-like. Both of these have that beautiful rose font and applique on top, as well as a bunch of other little piped royalizing roses. But I'm gonna show you basically in this section what's in the message and frame set, and also how to make those wafer paper tags. Now, as for what's in the message and frame set, normally, if I'm gonna be applying the message directly to the cookie, I would start with masking pieces to leave room for the message on the cookie. So as in the background set, I have masks in the message and frame set, and I've got three tags in this particular one. If I were to apply the messages and frames directly to the cookie, this mask would go down on top of the background stencil, much as the way I applied the heart in the previous section. But we're not gonna do that because we're gonna be putting these directly on wafer paper. So there's no need for the masks in this particular application only if you're applying directly to a cookie over the background stencil. The next element in this set, and again, this is a six piece set, is the shading stencil. Now, remember, I did not use this corresponding piece when working with the background set because it would tend to kind of diffuse or kind of muddy, if you will, those hearts and roses. I wanted them to be really sharp. But in this case, I do want to create a little bit of shadow and softness around the message, as you can see, on some of these tags here. For instance, this love tag has a very pale blue shadow in it, whereas hugs, love, and kisses here is largely white. So you can shade it or not shade it. I do like the addition of color. I've got some here that have a little bit of yellow in them, others that have a little bit of pink. That actually might have a little pink in it too. Here's a pure white one, so you can see the difference. So to get that shadow done, I use this piece, which is basically the negative piece that's left over after the masks are cut out. Then ordinarily, I, once the shadow is down, if I'm gonna use it, I would apply the frame stencil. And again, there's a stencil corresponding to each of the masks, so you can have your pick of three. And then lastly, I'd lay in the messages. And I misspoke earlier, there are actually six messages in this particular set and they can work in any number of the frames. As long as the word fits in the frame, it's something you can combine together. And I tend to lay those last after I put the frames down because it's easier to center the words once the frame is on the paper or on the cookie. So I'm gonna get started on applying a message and frame that I might use on that yellow cookie we did earlier 
directly onto wafer paper. Okay, you'll notice there's a rough side and a smooth shiny side to wafer paper. There's the rough side again and the smooth shiny side again. When you're airbrushing and stenciling or rubber stamping, you'll always get a cleaner imprint if you use the shiny side. So that's what we're doing. I'm setting the shading stencil first because I wanna get a shadow around my tags and I'm airbrushing at a distance. So I just get a soft suggestion of color around the edge of the tag. Again, weighting down with magnets and trussing needle because the stencil genie doesn't work in this configuration. Now onto the frame stencil, working at slightly closer range with a darker color, but at a 90 degree angle to the paper with low pullback or little coloring flow coming out of the trigger. That looks great, nice clean stencil. Onto the message stencil, I do like to lay it after laying the frames because I find it easier to center the messages within the frames if the frames are down first. Now we've got six messages to choose from here. As long as it fits within the frame, it's good to go. So I'm gonna use the kiss me message here on the heart and we'll see what that looks like. Again, airbrushing and stenciling just as I've done previously on the frames at a 90 degree angle with low coloring flow to avoid underspray. And that looks nice and sharp as a result. Now I'm gonna pick up the XO message in this vertical frame, airbrushing exactly the same way. I like to do a lot of these tags at one time then I have a big selection that I can choose from when I get down to actually decorating. And lastly, onto the horizontal tag. I think I'm gonna pick up the roses or red message just because that's the name of the stencil set and it seems only appropriate to use it here. Airbrushing once again, exactly the same way as on the previous messages. That's looking great. Now the next step is to cut these out. And just remember that wafer paper is brittle when it's dry, so you don't wanna to cut too aggressively. You wanna use small shears or cutters, these are craft scissors, and cut rather gradually and gently so you don't run the risk of tearing through your tag. I'm gonna cut around these little strings because they will make it look as if the tag is hanging off something else on the cookie. I may or may not expose them, but we wanna leave them on initially because we can choose to either expose them later or cut them off. And here I've got a whole set to choose from and they're all looking quite good. Okay, so I've got all the elements made to put this cookie together. In addition to the wafer paper tags that we just finished, I've added some royal icing roses, both full size ones. These smaller ones were done with a 101 S tip. These were done with a 101. And I've also got some buds to fill in and around the roses that are on the fondant applique. Now, my first step though is deciding what border I wanna put on this. On this yellow cookie here, I used a white one, which looks quite nice, but I've just got a few isolated pops of red. The other consideration is maybe I wanna put a red border on it like I did over here to tie in the roses that are gonna be in the center of the cookie. The other consideration though is that these cookies will be arranged in a big set eventually. So as long as I have red elsewhere on another cookie, the red sitting on this yellow cookie in isolation is not likely to look too weird. So onto the white border, and then I'll start putting down the other elements onto the cookie. So for beaded borders, I use royal icing of beadwork consistency. Naturally, that's a relatively loose icing that'll form a nice rounded bead without any peaks, without me having to tap down the dots or do anything odd to them. It should just flow beautifully into the shape I want, and so it does. We're gonna continue all the way around, let that dry a little bit, and then start adding things on top. Now the fondant applique right now is sitting directly on top of the cookie. I do wanna elevate it to give it more interest. And to do that, I'm putting down a little royal icing glue, thick white royal icing, a blob of fondant, and then more icing on top. And that's gonna have it hovering over the cookie about an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch. I could attach it directly to the cookie, but I like it lifted and it also leaves a little room for the wafer paper tag. I think this love tag looks best poking up rather than down. So I've glued that into place. And my last step is to glue on my little roses. I'm just gonna use a few accents here, one in the middle of the bow and a couple of others to add a little bit more red to the top of the piece. And again, I'm attaching with my thick royal icing glue. The thicker the icing is, the faster it'll dry and the less likely these things are to move around as you're working on the piece. Lastly, I wanna fill in around the gaps on the roses with some leaves. I'm using a relatively thick green icing and a Wilton 349 leaf tip, pushing and then releasing pressure when I pull back to create a fine tip. Pushing a bit, releasing pressure, pulling back. 
And I'm just rotating the cookie and filling in at various directions and angles so that we don't see any big gaps or icing underneath those roses. And again, just to balance out color across the top of the applique. That looks just great. Okay, so we just hit the tip of the iceberg with the designs I showed you here using my Roses Are Red Dynamic Duo sets. There's an infinite possibility, and I just want to show you a few. You'll see more photos scrolling overhead. This is the one we just finished. It uses both the background set and the message and frame set, but recall that the foreground element in the background set is elevated on a fondant applique. In this case, very, very similar, except I lost the message that we did on wafer paper. It's nearly identical without the message, a little bit smaller. It doesn't accommodate the message quite as well, so I left it off. Here's an example where I didn't stencil anything directly on the cookie. In these two previous examples, the dots and the ribbons were stenciled from the background stencil right on the icing. Here I left the background icing white. Then I made a fondant applique with the foreground rose element. Stuck that down with a little wafer paper tag and of course added royalizing roses. So a very simple background with a more elaborate foreground overlay. Looks nice too. Here's yet another example of using both sets. Slightly different palette than the yellow one I showed you earlier. I've used the red border to tie in with the red roses. Used a fondant applique, the rose element in the center. And the wafer paper tag. Just a slightly different message on that one. And then lastly, we conclude with what I started the video with, the very first cookie I did now bordered out and also with a little bit of rose work, royalizing roses on top. But in this case, I just used the background set and everything's laid directly on the cookie, including the background stencil and the striped heart foreground element. So as you can see, just by mixing and matching, you can come up with a limitless array of possibilities, yet there's some commonality in elements and colors across the entire set, which really brings it together if you're gonna display them together. In my next video, I'm gonna show how to use this set, but I'm gonna take it up a notch. Literally, we're gonna elevate it into a 3D project. So stay tuned for that and live sweetly. Mm -hmm.